What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another episode of four things we learned for you guys today. This is the show where we delve into four key talking points of whatever the last Chelsea game was and what a Chelsea game that was as well. Sevilla nil, Chelsea 4. We are going to delve into Olivier Drude's masterclass deeper into the video. We're also going to talk about the other nine players that were rotated into the squad for yesterday's game because they all made a massive claim for why they should be getting more game time under Frank Lampard. And to an extent, he will be happy with how much games we have going on the next month and how much time he has to rotate his players. The same way there's going to be a massive selection headache for him going into the next month. And it is the good sort of selection headaches. It is the sort of selection headache that gasses you up if you're a Chelsea fan. But there isn't much reason not to be gassed right now. We're unbeaten in 12. We're on an amazing run of form. And we look serious right now. We have a serious squad that's leaving me disconfident for the first time in years. But before we start this video, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that like button press the subscribe button and smash that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever you release any new content and let's go straight into four things we learned Point number one, and we might as well start with the man of the match himself, big Olivier Giroud. For a guy who is 34 years old, this guy is aging like a fine wine. Excellent performance from him. We were worried about potential match sharpness for Olivier Giroud going into what was his first start in, I think, two or three months. I think his last start was the Spurs game where we got knocked down in the cup, which also, surprisingly enough, was the last time we lost the game, which was all the way back in September. He had an unbelievable performance coming back into the start lineup. Sevilla couldn't handle him. His hold-up play was as good as we expect it to be. But the one surprising part of his game that I didn't think Sevilla were going to struggle so much with were his runs in behind. His runs in behind were so deadly and they were timed to perfection. Every time he was on the ball, he knew how to use his strength perfectly, which, as much as I love Tammy Abraham, is a bit of a disadvantage to his game. I think he really struggles to use his strength properly. And it is something that will grow in aspects of his game, but you need that sort of experience that Olivier Drew can bring to the side. And that's exactly why he thrived so much going forward. Every time they gave him a little bit of space, they let him, he made them suffer for it. You've got to see the first goal and the second goal as well as examples of that. An amazing turn for the first goal and then a little finesse into the top left-hand corner. Corner. And then that second goal, we've got to give credit to Mateo Kovacic for the assist and that nice little dink through ball in a tight bit of space. But Olivier Drude, to get rid of the defender by that little feint and then be able to drop the chip on the goalkeeper with his weak foot as well, it just shows the source and the levels of quality in this guy. And generally, this guy is probably the most underrated striker of the last 10 years. Maybe Europe, definitely in the Premier League. But I think it's, a, it's definitely a popular opinion amongst Chelsea fans. But we cannot allow Olivier Drew to leave in January. I know he wants to break the all-time top goal-scoring record for France. I still don't see why Chelsea would end up hindering that. If you look at France's options going forward. Yes, they have Kylian Mbappe. But they also have bums like Martial and bums like Lacazette that are barely going to get any game time. And after their performances recently, they can't justify the game time. Even especially over someone like Olivier Drew who's been sitting on the bench for two or three months so I could see Olivier Drew staying for the last six months I do definitely think he's going to be that sort of player that is going to be vital to us in the second half of the season when a lot of the players who've been playing for long periods of time are burnt out going into running you need experienced players that can help you get across the finish line and Olivier Drew is exactly that sort of player you got a perfect hat trick yesterday which shows how versatile he can be in the final third and it shows how much quality he has to he's not limited to just one foot he can do both foot. He can do a head as well. And yeah, if we need him to stat pad penalties, I guess he can stat pad penalties as well. So first point, Olivier Drew has to start against Leeds. We do have to build on this guy's form in the last game. Tammy Abraham, I'm not saying we have to outright drop the guy. But I do think a little bit of time on the bench will do him all the good of justice. And I think he'll come back a lot more re-energized, a lot more motivated, and not more willing to try and prove his spot. And I think we need that sort of ruthlessness as well. It is a bit harsh dropping Tammy Abraham after one bad performance in his last five or six bad performances. But same way it shows the levels at Chelsea and it shows the ruthlessness needed at the top level. If you can't perform at that level consistent, consistently, they'll find someone else that can do that. So, first point, Olivier Drew has to start against Leeds. I think he'll, his hold-up play will be key to giving space in behind for players like Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech to try and, do, and, to try and cause damage. And yeah, Olivier Drew just has to start against Leeds. That's my first point. 
Second point, and I want to shout out the fullbacks. I'm going to go more deeper into the squad's depth as a whole in my third point, but I have to give a special shout to the fullbacks because Azpilicueta and Emerson were on job the entire day yesterday. Azpilicueta, I don't think they even had a chance down that right hand side throughout the first half. He was all over that right hand side. His link up play with Callum Hudson Doyle is excellent. I think the interchanges were perfect. You know, one went forward, the other one was more than willing to sit deep and vice versa with both of them. It's also so another shout out I want to give to Hudson Doyle's off the ball movement was amazing both defensively and offensively and he does look to be slowly getting back to his best as well but as for Equator looked excellent with Reese James playing regularly in that right back position you wouldn't be it wouldn't be unfair to say as Equator would come back and he might look a little bit out of pace but he came back and he was absolutely excellent I think he gave a lot of aggression that was needed in a really aggressive game against Sevilla. Sevilla were cagey for long periods of that match, especially in the first half. And we needed a bit of that grit and aggression in defence to try and get us through. Especially in the first half, it was a very 50-50 sort of game. And possession was being turned over and being won back and lost very quickly. We needed a player like Azpilicueta who could marshal that back line and control his right-hand side. And he did that excellently. Emerson as well. A player who I personally had given up on. Same with Marcus Alonso. I was saying I'd be happy to get rid of one. Drop the other one as a two for one deal if you want to. But if Emerson has performances like this. I have, no re I have nothing against him staying. Even as a second choice left back. If he can play like that come slot in whenever Ben Chilwell needs a rest and play consistently at that sort of level, do it. All over that left-hand side, he never he never let his head drop down from the first minute to the 90. Excellent performance from him as well. Third point, and we're going to talk about the squad depth as a whole. And if there is anything, anything that has gassing me up for the rest of the season, it is this. We have a team. We don't just have a start in 11. We have a full squad. We made nine full rotations going into an away game against the Europa League champions, who also love a game against English opposition. Their record against English opposition is very strong. And we just smoked them for 90 minutes. Nine different rotations. We had a fully changed back line. We had a fully changed front three. I think those got Kovacic and who was the other player? Was it Havertz were the only players that actually started in the last game? I'm not sure who the second player was. Someone will remind me in the comment section. But no, it was Edward Mendy, idiot. But yeah, my point still stands. Nine different rotations going into this match. And look how badly we smoked them on the pitch today. Four midfielders right now deserve to start in a three-man midfield based on their recent form. Mason Mount has been excellent and Golo Kante has been excellent. Kovacic has been excellent and the same thing can be said for Kai Havertz going straight into this game, coming out of self-isolation. It was his first start. It was his first start in about two or three weeks and it didn't even look any different. Honestly, going into the Leeds game, if you, could t if you put a bullet to my head and told me to pick who should start, I actually wouldn't be able to tell you right now. But it's those good selection headaches that you want. Going forward as well, Pulisic, I do think he's still getting back to his best. He looked very solid on the ball, was just overdoing it a little bit too much. But he's getting back to it. He's coming back from another injury. We do need to be patient with him. And I've said throughout the season, I want that sort of patient for, patience for Christian Pulisic. I don't want him rushed back into the squad. I don't want him playing two games a week. I don't care who the opposition is. We can't risk losing this guy to more injuries so we can be a bit slow with him. Hudson Odoi is another one getting back to his best very slowly and Olivier Drude, we've already spoken about how much he balled out yesterday. The defence as well, the Rudiger and Christensen, if you, if you put that back four in front of Kepa last season, we would have lost this game. And if there's any bigger proof that Kepa tax is real and it shows how much we needed a solid goalkeeper going into this season, it's the fact that we played a back four of Aspi, Emerson, Christensen and Rudiger and we kept a clean sheet against Sevilla. What a performance by the squad. We've got a lot of players that are giving Frank Lampard massive selection headaches going into the future games and for Frank Lampard he can be very grateful that it is December there are games coming about twice in the space of every week so there'll be plenty of chances for other players to get the game time that they think they deserve and yeah it keeps the competition going and it brings the best out of everyone in the squad and that's the sort of mentality and that's the sort of vibes that you want going into a title race which is what is making me more and more optimistic by the week final point and we're going to speak on Frank Lampard because it is about time we put some respect on this guy's name. He has been given so, many, so much criticism over the last 18 months. 
Some of it's been deserved, some of it is fair. Like, we've never said Frank Lampard's been perfect the entire time. There's been times where criticism has been fair. I've criticised him at times, and that's okay. But he has been slandered, especially through the summer, especially after the FA Cup final defeat, and we're hearing people call him a championship manager. People saying he only got the job because of what he did as a player for Chelsea Football Club. And look what he's done in the one and a half seasons that he spent at the club. He got Chelsea to within a point of third place without even Hazard with injuries throughout the entire season and a massive transfer ban to deal with as well as well as heavy kept attacks to be dropped in nearly every single game that season and now this season as well we now have a philosophy we now have an we now have an understandable style of play we now have a set starting 11 we have a set back four which we were saying was one of the biggest issues of the season every player that Frank Lampard has put his neck out on the line and said I've wanted this player has stood out and balled out every single time they're on the pitch Pitch. Guys, we are unbeaten in 12 games. We have one defeat in 90 minutes this season. It is time we start taking Frank Lampard seriously. And this isn't a message to Chelsea fans. This is more of a message to rival fans if you're still here 10, 11 minutes into the video. It is time to put some respect on Frank Lampard's name. I know the biggest test is coming up and that is Christmas. And that will separate the title contenders from the pretenders. But there's no reason not to be optimistic about Chelsea and not to think that we are going to be in and around the title race for the remainder of the season. Guys, Guys, it's time to start getting gassed. This is the end of four things we learned. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my opinions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. I'll see you tomorrow for the Leeds preview. Take care and up the gels.